In this video, we set up a character selection screen so you can play as either Baza or, of course, you could play as Shazza. So let's get in and have a look at how to do it. And the assets you're going to need for this one, well, you need some sort of screen where we pick our character. You're going to need a sprite sheet for that character and also a new attack sound for your new character. Add in that new variable, so var character equals, and we're just going to leave it like that. Perfect. Added the character variable to our global script. Now we're going to add a new scene, um, and this scene is going to be for selecting our character. So 2D scene, let's rename it to character, oops, character selection, like that. And we're going to give it a texture rect to start with. Uh, got a bit of lag, texture rect. All right, there we go. So this texture rect um, is going to have that character select PNG that we've got. So let's drag that over and drop it into our texture in the uh, inspector. All right, now we're going to turn this to ignore size in our expanded mode and just make that so it's the size of our uh, window. Uh, like so, too easy. Let's give it a save as we're going along to make sure that we don't make any errors and can easily go back. All right, now we're going to add in a texture button and another one. And these texture buttons are going to serve for selecting which one. So we call one of the buttons Bazza. We're going to call the other button Shazza, like so. Then we can just arrange those over each character. Doesn't need to be perfect, does it? I doubt people are going to click on the very edge of it. But we'll do the best we can. All right, so those are our buttons. Now, we also want to um, make a minor change over here. So we select our mouse over here, making sure we've got um, stop, force pass on, but we want to change the default arrow to be, uh, maybe we'll do the pointing hand, just so it's highlighting that um, when we hover over it, so you recognize that it's a button. And we'll do the same for Shazza. So we want that to be pointing hand. And that means that now when our um, cursor goes across, it's going to change from a normal arrow to that pointer. All right, that's that bit done. I think the next is going to be our script. Uh, attach a script. So we go back to our root node. We click on the script, adding thingamajiggy. Character selection sounds fine by me. Create that. That's the, going to open up with our basic template. Now we want to signal Bazza and Shazza through. So we're going to click on Bazza, go over to our um, node over here, and we're going to have our button pressed. And then we're going to do the same thing for Shazza, button pressed. And that signals those into our character selection uh, script. All right, now we actually are going to keep this pretty basic, I think. So I am going to just copy what I've got um, off screen so you don't have to watch me make tons of typos paste that in there all right so we've got our two function or our two buttons here so global character so remember the variable we made character in our global script so Baza and Shazza so basically what we're doing when we click on this particular button for Baza we are selecting that particular um, name to fill in that variable that we created and then we load the world and vice versa so for shazza we create that name all right so that's that bit done save that and let's move on so i just duplicate all of my animations and give uh one set of them baza underscore and the other set of them shazza underscore and pretty much just go through and copy it all exactly as it is To update our uh, update animation function inside our player script. So what I'm going to do is rather than typing this out because I will make a million mistakes, I'm just going to replace the existing function. I'm replacing the entire function with the new one. All right. So all we're really doing here is making sure that we can grab that uh, prefix or the global dot character um, variable that we created before plus the little underscore. So all the logic here is just to make it so that we throw that um, character variable plus an underscore in front of all of our animations. And that's really it. So you can see all of this reads almost exactly the same as how it read before, but we've just made a few minor changes to make sure that we uh, are checking for that prefix. 
make sure that the attack sound is appropriate for our player. So our Bazaar attack sound uh, is a little bit uh, blokey, so we're gonna have a female sort of version as well. So what we're gonna do to control that is just update our input event function. So this particular function here, we're just adding um, or changing that up a bit. Now what we obviously also have to do is make some changes up here. So our current one that is just called audio stream player. Oh, hang on, I had that popped out. Let me grab me, uh, me script back. Let's, uh... all right, here we go. So we wanna, um, instead of have having the audio stream player 2D, we want it to be Bazaar attack. So let's change this one, Bazaar attack. Now we just wanna have another one of those, right? And we're gonna change that one to Shazza attack. And then we're gonna um, go to our inspector and we're gonna change our um, sound for this one into the Shazza attack sound. So Oi was the Bazza one and there's Shazza attack. Take it over, drop it in there. All right, so that is that part done. We've updated our sounds. Um, so Bazaar attack, Shazza attack, that should all make sense now. Excellent. So let's uh, save that and have a look at our next bit. We are updating our die function because of course we need to make sure we're calling the correct animation. So it's actually a, a reasonably small change that we're going to make. So we're just adding in, um, so animated sprite.play global.character plus underscore die. So that's just making sure that we play the die function for Shazza or Baza as opposed to just the die function that we had originally. Save that. Next, we're going to update this little function down the bottom, which is our um, animated sprite 2D finish. So this is how we're checking to see if our die animation is finished before we go to our game over scene. So we just need to make a similar tiny change to that one. So we're just now saying if animated sprite 2D.animation.ends with die, um, grab it like that. So that's how we're making that change. Save that one. Go and test it. Just head to your project settings, head to your application and run. And then just make sure your main scene is that new scene we created called character selection to make sure the rest of it's all gonna work out. And then we can run our game. So we come in and we can choose our character, either Bazza or Shazza. So I'll click on Shazza. There she is there. Nighttime has passed. She's getting chased. She can attack the magpie and you can hear our new um, sound. Gonna go and grab that torch. Um, there we go. So it looks like that is working perfectly. Let's go back out though and just test it with Bazza as well to make sure that that works. Select Bazza. And I think what we'll do for Bazza is we'll get him to die to make sure our death animation is working as well. So let's go and hunt down something to kill us. Oh, and here comes another one. And the animation plays. And then it is so to get all that working, you must create a new scene and script for the character selection and update the uh, player and global scripts with those animations and sounds and obviously update the player animations. What you may like to do is think about how you could use that new character variable to create unique and um, and different abilities for each of the different characters. Because using that variable allows you to just change anything you want to change really, really easily. What you might like to do is consider how you would expand this to have more character choices. Maybe you want more than just so two. You can now choose your character at the start of the game in, I think, the easiest Next way. Next time, possible. I think we're going to be looking at ranged attacks. So uh, the quote I want to that. leave you with this week is from Thiknat Han, and he said, the present moment is filled with joy and happiness. If you are attentive, you will see it.